Okay, y'all, let's give it up for Vicky now. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you had a restful night of sleep. And uh, originally, I was trying to make this talk as uninteresting as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, I that might not be possible um, due to, to the nature of the topic, I guess. Um, so I'll screen share to make it easy for you to, um, okay, let me see if I can get this to work. Um, so um, my talk is um, on the art of heist on being delusional. Um, um, and the talk may or may not embody the following ideas. Um, how to tell the world a reality, how it is not. How to bank rob the New, York, New Yorker. And how to conduct a literary heist. Um, and this talk um, is also designed to excite um, analytical and analytical thought, a thoughtful discussion on the art of heist, and to excite a chronic and incurable exercise in robbing banks. Um, we may begin to declare that the nature of heights and the nature of heights in writing isn't worth the risk, but it is. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but robbing banks is incredibly risky. Um, partly to do long prison sentences if you are caught, um, and um, and also robbing other people words is also very risky. Um, and I will try to do one of those tasks today. Um, 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 and I hope this talk will inspire you to rob banks, um, literary banks, that is, um, not actual banks. Um, um, and that already pre-exists within the hidden vault of your consciousness. So um, in order to talk about literary heights, I want to talk about real um, film, filmic heights. Um, these are some of my favorite uh, heights movies. Um, La Casa de Papel, Cohen uh, Luke, um, Inside Man, um, uh, Heights of the Century, Latro and that the right pronunciation for that French word, I may have mispronounced that, and flawless. Um, I I'll uh, read a little bit description of each of the bank heists so that um, um, you have some sense of what the film is about because those images don't really talk um, about the 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 heights. But uh, for instance, Cohen Luke is a 1967 American prison drama film directed by Stuart Rosenberg. The story revolves around Lucas, Luke Jackson, played by Paul Newman, a rebellious inmate who refuses to conform to the strict rules and authority of Florida prison camp. Uh, Luke becomes a symbol of resilience and nonconformity as he faces various challenges and punishment. The film explores the theme of individualism, rebellion, and the struggle of freedom. Uh, even though this is not a bank heist movie, it's a prison movie. Uh, uh, um, I so I I bank heist and prison breakouts are in the same domain for me. Um, and then La Casa de Papel. Um, it's a the English uh, Netflix title for it is the Money Heist. And it's a Spanish heist uh, crime drama television series created by Alex Alex Pina. The story follows a mysterious man known as the Professor, who recruits eight criminals to carry out an ambitious plan, um, infiltrating the Royal Mint of Spain and printing billions of euro while using hostages to negotiate with the police. And then, of course, the Inside Man. Um, 
um, is a 2006 American Heights film directed by Spike Lee. Uh, the story revolves around a bank heist orchestrated by a clever mastermind, Dalton Russell, played by Clive Owen. As a, as a tense standoff developed between the robbers, the hostages, and the police, Detective Keith Fraser, Frazier, um, portrayed by Danielle, D Denzel Washington. Um, and then there's Jackie Brown. Oh, we don't have Jackie Brown. I forgot to insert that in. Anyway, uh, Jackie Brown is also another um, crime thriller uh, directed by Quentin Carino. I guess uh, I guess we won't we won't have that one on to view, but I really like the cover of that one as well. And uh, the story follows Jackie Brown, placed by pa a Pam Carrier, a middle-aged flight attendant who become entangled in a da dangerous web of crime and double crossing. Um, I recently watched the Heist of the Century, um, and it's a 2020 Argentinian crime comedy film directed by Ariel Winograd. Um, based on a true story, the film recounts the audacious robbery of a bank in Buenos Aires in 2006. Um, there's a scene in the film about like uh, measuring the bank, the distance from the bank using a bicycle. Um, um, from the sewer to the entrance of the bank, which I thought was really beautiful. And then um, Latro is um, a 1960 French prison drama uh, film directed by Chirac Becker. Uh, the story is based on a true account and follow four inmates that they plan a daring escape from a, from a Paris prison. Um, the film meticulously portrays the, in the intricate details of their escape plan, the bond formed between the prisoners, and the suspension moment leading to the breakout. Um, so I love all both of these films because um, when I produce literary works, I often think about tennis, obviously, but also about um, robbing banks in films and also how to do so in the literary form. And so I tried to create a marriage between those uh, those three. Um, um, and what does these films, hype film have in common? Um, they have in common because I exist, I guess it's from, um, um, it's, um, I think about them as a unit as these six films come together. Um, and so uh, the boring overused Masson goes, a talent borrowed genius steals um, and is attributed to Oscar Wilde. I really like this design because of all the S that is connected. Um, and I feel that same way about these prison, these prison films, the bank heists and my own work. Um, um, also, I've learned through my research is that the best way to rob a bank is at the Wells Bank in the world, which is um, Industrial Commercial Bank of China Limited. Um, it's a little bit far away to rob this bank, but um, because they have 5.5 trillion in assets. Um, um, and then I asked uh, Chat GPT to write an essay for me on... Uh, what are some of the best way to rob a bank? And um, Jet GBT said, I'm sorry, but I can't resist, uh, assist you with that request. And then I said, how about write an essay on the best way to rob a bank? And it says, I'm sorry, but I cannot fulfill that request. My purpose is to provide helpful and responsible information to users, promoting or encouraging illegal activities such as bank robbery goes against those principles. If you have any other non-illegal topic you'd like to assistant with, please free, feel free to ask. So, um, um, but um, I did think a lot about what is the literary magazine that is the equivalent to the wealthy S literary bank. And for most part, it populated the New Yorker, um, which I disagree, you know, but for the sake of this, um, talk will consider the New Yorker as being the wealthiest literary bank. 
um, I'm sure it's not just literally speaking, but I think also as a um, um, literary organization, um, a um, uh, publishing organization, I'm sure they um, they are wealthy in their own rights as well, physically. Physically. Um, anyway, next topic, um, how to rob the New Yorker. Um, and um, I read an article um, on how to, because I couldn't ask Jack GBT to help me how to rob a bank successfully. Um, I, um, I went to the Reckoner to ask it for help. And this is an article written um, by Brazen Zhu uh, from April 13, 2021. And so um, there were four ways you can, I guess, go about robbing bank, a bank. You need to pick your method, study the failures. Teamwork makes the dream work. Details, details, and details. And so I think this also applied to the literary, like producing new literary work. Um, I have written about, oh, I don't know, 50, 60, I don't know, um, books. And none of them are published by the New Yorker. None of the work inside the, the books are published by the New Yorker. So obviously, I don't know how to rob um the New Yorker or get it to publish my work. Um, but I guess these are some of the methods that you can go to uh, do so. So um, in the article, it says, pick your method. And um, when you write a piece, I want you to think, you know, like the next literary piece that has a potential home in the New Yorker, um, you can choose these four methods and try it out and see if it works. Maybe it'll work for you and not for me. Um, but um, basically, um, I'll walk down the list to pick your methods, study the failures. So um, if you submitted a piece and it was rejected by the New Yorker, you might wonder what happened. Um, why did it fail? Um, I'm still studying it. I am still trying to write a harlequin romance and I don't know how to write one. Not that the New Yorker would publish a harlequin romance for me, but I still struggle every single day trying to write outside of my um, experimental um, um, domain. And, um, and I don't, I have no clue. And I think this is why I am completely in the dark about my failures, you know, my excited failures. I don't know why I fail, you know. At first, I thought it was because I was too innovative, you know. Um, I thought maybe the New Yorker uh, liked boring, boring things that um, can be skimmed over, that read, that something that you read in your bathroom while you defecate um, and not, um, you know, um, and, but I did think, you know, what if you gather a group of your peers together to write the work that is like, will be accepted by the New Yorkers? Um, what would that teamwork entail? Um, and the article also said details, details, details. Um, and it's related to the bank robbery, like, you know, like, no, the look, um, it went in through these, you can read the article um, later, how to rob a bank successfully. Um, I'll tell you the method. I don't want to bore you to death with it. Um, but um, um, so when you write your piece, um, your the your masterpiece, whether it's a poem or a fiction or nonfiction, um, who will help you um, make, um, who are some of the, writers or mentors or uh, co colleagues or cohorts or books or um, um, natural elements um, or grass or water or drink or coffee or whatever um, that is um, what um, compositions of material that um, that will make this 
possible for you to manifest your your vision. Um, and I think that's really important because I think like I know for bank robber you need like a someone who is really good at um, breaking the vaults who know how to decode. Um, and maybe you need someone in your team who can help you decode difficult languages, difficult experimentation, difficult passages in a book that you are struggling. Like I like whenever I read theoretical work and I include theoretical framework in my writing, I meet up with like four other um, other writers and we would break a text down line by line. Like we literally like we're reading um 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 the the philosopher uh what is her name i'm trying to remember her name um um what is a female philosopher um i i, I don't know why i can't think of one in the top on top of my head uh loose irrigate for instance um um and um so if there was a difficult passage we all sit down and to a, and break that down. And I feel like um, in order for you to figure out uh, how to decode the infrastructure of the New Yorker, you would need uh, you would need a teamwork, a team instead of just one person trying to um, trying to figure it out. Um, and um, there's more on details, but I won't go into those. Um, um, I did. Um, um, you can also rob the bank, um, uh, rob New Yorker by doing it via chat GBT, which I did. Um, I opened um, a chat GBT account, a GBT account just for this talk. And I asked it to um, write an essay on the art of the literary heist using literature and poetry in the style of Viki now. I literally asked it and it wrote it wrote this article for me. It's amazing. It wow, it this talk took me like three or four hours to do. It did it in two seconds. Um it wrote so fast. I um uh, so I'll read this article to you and then and then I'm going to ask you to do a literary heights. I'll take a look at the chat to see. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, Judith Butler. Um, thank you so much, Riley, for that. Um, okay, great. Um, so, unraveling the literary heights. This is um, this is written by ChatGPT, and all this was stolen. All this thing, I stole it from the internet. So, what you see right here, I didn't make it. So, I'm really truly heisting um, this thing. Um, okay, let's read the article that GBT, um, uh, let's see if I can move this over. Okay. Um, okay. Unraveling the literary heights. So introduction. In the realm of literature, there exists an elusive and enchanting act known as the literary heights. Much like a thief in a night, the literary heights is an intricate dance of appropriation, homage, and reimagining. It is an art form that, in the hands of skill writers, allows for the seamless fusion um, on the divorce voice um, and perspective, transforming stolen fragments into a kaleidoscope of literary brilliance. And this essay, inspired by the unconvention and evocative style of Vicky now, we will explore the multifaceted nature of the literary heights and its profound impact on the artistic landscape. So, body, the electric, the electric, the electric palette of borrow words. Within the realm of literatures, words are the bling block of creation, like a master painter selecting colors from an electric palette, the literary heights artist deftly appropriates words, phrases, and even entire passages from existing work. This act of thievery, however, is not driven by malice. 
but rather by the deep respect for the source material. By intertwining stolen fragments with their own unique vision, writers fashion new narratives that transcend the boundaries of time, space, and individuality. It's writing better than I would be able to write. So I'm, I'm like, I'm going to become like obsolete after this conversation. I would not need to ever write another sentence. Um, I can just borrow myself from Jet GBT. Um, Homage, a reference for literary lineage. The art of the literary heights is infused with a profound sense of homage. It's a celebration of the giants who have come before, who words have shaped the literary landscape. In a single stroke, the heights artists pay tribute to the masters while simultaneously transcending their influence. By adopting adapting the style, themes, and motifs of the literary predecessors, these artists engage in a literary conversation that expands generations, breathing new life into age-old stories. Reimagining the familiar. In the hands of a skilled heights artist, stolen fragments become raw material for imagining the familiar. It is through this act of transformation that the stolen words are imbued with new essence, offering readers a fresh lens to which to view the world. In the literary heights, nothing is sacred or untouchable, and even the most mundane or obscure sources can be transmuted into work of profound beauty and meaning. Collage as a creation. Like a masterful collage artist, the literary heights artist resemble, assembles the stolen fragments into a coherent whole, creating a patchwork of narratives that defy conventional storytelling. The act of appropriating and rearranging disparate elements allow for multidimensional explorations of themes, blurring the boundaries between reality and imagining, imagination and inviting readers into a realm where the unexpected becomes the norm. The Ethical Dilemma While the literary heights can be seen as a celebration of creativity and intertextuality, it also raises ethical questions. How much borrowing is too much? When does homage become theft? These questions challenge both the heights artist and audience to navigate the deliberate balance between inspiration and originality. The literary heights remind us all that art is built upon the shoulders of those who came before, and it's our responsibility to acknowledge and respect our resources while forging our own creative paths. The conclusion, it, um, it only wrote halfway, which I love. Like it just ended, embark on. Um, the art of literary heights, as exemplified by the work of Vicky now, it's a testament to the transformative power of language. Through appropriation, homage, and reimagining, writers create intricate tapestries of words that defy conventional boundaries. The Lurie Heights serves as a reminder that the art is a continuum, an ongoing conversation where voices merge and diverge, leaving an indelectable mark on the tapestry of human imagination. It challenges us to consider the notion of ownership and encourages a more fluid and collaborative approach to creativity as we embark on our dot, dot, dot. At any rate, um, I don't think I would write like this at all. Uh, so um, ChatGBT did a terrible job of emulating me. Um, just to say, I just want to throw it out there. Um, also, um, 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 if you did find, um, even if you did steal the entire whole article from uh, the New Yorker, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get uh, published. You know, you might um, ask this is seen in this uh, article. The New Yorker rejects its own story. So even if you do uh, extract a entire whole story from New Yorker and resubmit it to the New Yorker, it would reject its own story. It will give you like, um, I'm so sorry, you know, we have a lot of submissions, but we're going to have to let this one go, that sort of thing. And which I thought was amazing. Um, this person um, um, was bound to happen sooner at the review review author David Cameron reveals that he disguised an old New Yorker story, resubmitted with a new title and byline, and was rejected at every turn. This is just to say, you know, even if you have the right formula and you know how to 
rob the New Yorker and the bank and everything else, it doesn't mean that it's going to manifest at all. Um, what do the results say about the subjectivity of art, the fallibility of editors, the slush piles, quagmire? Who knows? But everyone loves a scandal. Um, and then you can go to this link and elect the literature if you want to explore more. So I thought we can do our own literary heights. Um, and um, literally, you're going to submit. I hope I can get you all to submit a piece of work. There is a literary amazing car literary height. Um, and here's the link. You click on it. And this is the main page. What it like? I want you to hit on submission, and the submission should look like this. So you insert your name, your email address, select the category, was poetry or etc. Your title and description. And um, I just want you to steal all sort of text from all over the internet, from the New Yorker, from all everywhere, and create a work that is done in like five minutes. So I'm going to give you five minutes to steal everyone's work, create a fast new work, and then I want you, and then we'll we come back and you're going to submit it to this Literary Heights. Um, so we dive into that. You don't have a lot of time, a lot of bank heights. You don't have like all day to rob the bank. That's why I'm giving you only five minutes in and out, like in and out burger. So uh, let's time you for five minutes. And I want you to rob anything from the internet. Yeah, everything goes. Um, rob it. Take sentences. Takes four paragraphs. Whatever it is to create. Oh, also you have parameters. Um, the uh, literary height uh, publishes a minimum word of fifty. This is not only prefer maximum word four hundred. So your poem shouldn't go over four hundred words. Um, your short story should be minimum three hundred and maximum words. 2,000. So, yeah, go steal away. I give you five minutes. We'll come back in five minutes and then you're going to submit this.
It's time. Drop your guns. Your bags of money. Or you get arrested if you stay too long. And um, and now it's time for you to submit. You go to the Literary Heights submission and you go to submit this piece. You can describe um, you can des describe a little bit. Um, I'll give you five minutes to submit. Would that give you enough time? Five minutes to submit to Literary Heights.
So time, did everyone submit their, their stolen writing? Um, so I, what I learned with the Jet GPT is that, uh, let me screen share again. Um, also, I learned that uh, Jay's favorite heist movie is Rafiti, Rafiti, that how you pronounce it, and Asala uh, is Tower Heights, so I look forward to watching those films uh, when I get a chance to. Anyway, um, um, I hope that was another way for you to do um, speed collage. Um, um, any questions? V, can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, <clears throat> what is, do you have a, just what occurs to you in terms of your own heist that you've made? Something that really stands out that felt really surprising to you? Or if you even have a sense of how it surprised you? Um. I think a lot of my work is incredibly cryptic. Um, it's very encoded. And I think um, the heights in terms of the experience is for the reader. If they're able to decode um, my coding system, like I have um, a very precise method in which I create certain material. And when people read my work, they're like, oh, it's experimental. It seems arbitrary, you know, any word land anywhere. But I think my work is incredibly um, coded, and I work a lot. Um, I work really hard at coding that particular set of uh, material language. Um, I have hidden clues in them um, uh, that are some people might think is inside jokes, but I think it's it's not. Uh, there are people who have decoded my work. Um, there was one one person that spent like three months on reading um, a piece of mine. And I said, this is a, this is, this is a puzzle actually, and not just experimental writing. And it took her like three months of like reading the same piece over and over again. Um, I had, I'll tell you the code of it. I written a a story about a woman who, um, uh, who was pregnant. Um, and she, um, um, she had a miscarriage and, but instead of talking about her miscarriage, I said, um, um, her body is like an apartment, um, and, um, and that the, um, the tenant is the child and it was going to be, um, um, evicted. So I talk about the eviction process for the child, but it's all in this coded language. And so I think that's the best type of literary heights to do is to have a difficult bank vault in which, you know, in order to access the treasure of the, the, the piece, um, there's a lot of like recombining, decoding, a lot of like working around the language, rereading the same sentence, revisiting the same bank spot, checking out the, um, the you know, fire hydrant, the staircase, um, uh, where they stash the vaults, all of these uh, free, um, free study uh, on um, sc uh, scouting out the area. And, and I think like, for me, like, that's the exciting part for me is just writing this encoded language in which I think ChatGPT can't capture. You know, it's not writing this very 
particular set of codes. And so um, its language is very general and um, it talks only in generality. It can't talk specifically. It can't like have this um, particular like if that is for like grass, you know, like the trees that grows um, verdant things. It just doesn't it doesn't capture that. And so um, my journey as a writer is or as a art like um, literary art maker as uh, I try to have a very sophisticated system in which I make very simple things look uh, not that simple um, on the page for me. And whenever a reader is able to decode that, I get really excited. Like they get my work. Um, mm. um, yeah, I, uh, um, I think like anything that you can steal, I think it can be a heights, I guess. Um, um, and you know, like how well you do it and get away with it. I mean, there are people that that get away with it all the time. Like, I know for a fact that it was it was it Hemingway who stole it from Gertrude Stein. <laughs> I don't know all these famous famous writers that end up, you know, stealing from other 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 writers. It happens all the time. Um, but, um, um, I don't know, like, um, stealing form has been like an interesting exercise for me. Like I would go to the poetry foundation and look at the different types of, um, shapes that poetry inhabit. And I would just take that shape and fill it with my own words. So those are like another literary heights that I've done. Um, you can see it in my collection, uh, War is Not My Mother. It is, it is, the entire whole manuscript is literary heights. I basically took the form and I fill it with my own language and I made it particular to mine. And so you can see example of it every single page that you turn. Um, so you can see how uh, it successfully and Clash is publishing it. So obviously I'm not like, um, um, I think that's the type of stealing that I'm interested in. Um, and so <laughs> I love Matt Hart's uh, um, quoting a Polly Violi. Poetry is, e it is easy and impossible like stealing from yourself. Thank you so much, Matt. Well, that's all. Uh, we have one one last question, V. Um, Go ahead, Maya. Does the heist anxiety get better with each heist, or do you <laughs> feel as nervous every time? Um, I get bored. To be honest. I get really bored. Um, um, yeah, I get really bored. Um, like, in order to come with this talk, like my partner and my best friend helped me brainstorm for like um, quite a long time what I was going to do a talk about. And um, after my open heart surgery, I I kind of lost interest in a lot of things, you know, things that used to excite me. Um, and my body is changing so much from all the medicine that I'm taking. So it was, it was really hard just to come up with a topic that I could talk about. Um, I couldn't even steal an idea from someone else. It was just, I was so bored that when my partner and my best friend list a bunch of like topic that I could talk to and they said you can steal it from me I couldn't even steal it from them and so um I think like if I were to experience a writer's block ever that would be the first time it would be 
not coming up with a talk that would get me excited. I could do a talk, but um, um, and I've written, I've written like long articles that took me time, but I've lost interest in those as well. And um, but I found, I found my passion again, and it's in translation. So I'm doing a lot of translation. So, um. And I wish I had talked about the translation in this talk, but um, one of the reasons why I was against it is because I didn't like talking about things that I'm doing because I have this thing that I think is jink, you know, when you talk so much about your work that you end up not doing it. It's like I have this wonderful story and it has a great plot and then you tell everyone about it and then you're like, oh, I don't feel like writing it anymore. Like you've burnt all your energy and telling others about this great thing that you have in mind. And so not to kill my own passion, I did a talk that I wasn't passionate about, which is a literary heights. <laughs> um, um, and so I had to come up with something that was incredibly boring for me. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is the topic that I can't get excited about. And that, um, you know, like if you steal things from people, you might have to return it back. So I'm like, what if I taught something that uh, that that is completely stolen and now now I can't use it? So I thought, oh, that is something that is like, um, what is the word like? How to cock block yourself is that? I don't know if that's the right word. Um, um, what is another word for cock block? Um, uh, what it? Um, I can't think of another adjective. But anyway, um, maybe chat TTT will help me like find a synonym for it. But um, 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 so I, you know, like sometimes um, like I think talks can be very difficult as well because it can get in the way of your creative energy. If you put so much energy into um, de describing your process before you finish the process, um, it can be dangerous. So. Um, that was one of the biggest challenges of writing, talking about this talk is that I didn't want to talk about the things that I was working on that I was so passionate about. V, thank you so much. I um, hope that you will be on my heist team. Uh, let's give V a round of applause. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Jason, for to mess up a dude's action. I like that a lot. So I don't want to mess up my dude's action. My dude, <laughs> my dudette's action. My do dudette's action. Anyway, okay. Well, have a wonderful um, workshop. I'll see you in our uh, the intimate lives of collaboration, um, and we'll do a lot more. This one is not a collaborative effort. Um, but technically, it's somewhat you're collaborating with the rest of the world, but we'll do true mm -hmm. uh, collaborations when um, tomorrow or the next day. Bye everyone. Thank you for coming. Bye. Thank you.